From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Niles Pearson, Johnny, at Universal Adjustment Bureau. Oh, how are you, Niles? Worried at the moment. Can you help me out? I don't know. What's on your mind? $65,000 worth of horse flesh. Ever hear of Duke Red? Yeah, I think so. The Futurity last year? That's the horse. Johnny, Columbia Indemnity is going to have to settle a claim on him. Why? Duke Red was seriously injured and had to be destroyed. Did you say 65000 Yeah. No wonder you're worried, Niles. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Universal Building, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Duke Red matter. Expense account item one, $197.80. Airfare and incidentals getting me from Hartford to San Francisco and a town about 40 miles south of there called San Pietro. At the San Pietro Hotel, I learned that the Abbott Ranch was some five miles outside of town but that the Abbott Stables maintained offices in San Pietro. Hello. Hello. I'd like to get in touch with Mr. Abbott. My name's Johnny Dollar. Oh, Mr. Abbott's never here. He's mostly out at the ranch. You'll have to see him there. Oh. Well, uh, is there any place in town I can rent a car? Not that I know of. Bus? Afraid not. What's your business with Mr. Abbott? Insurance. I'm here to adjust a claim of his. Oh, yes, Duke Red. Could I see Mr. Abbott's business manager? Uh, Mr. Monroe. Mr. Monroe isn't with Mr. Abbott's office any longer. Well, now, that's funny. He was with Mr. Abbott's office three days ago when he notified us that a claim was being filed in this matter. I got it right here on paper. Oh. Well, you might as well know. Mr. Abbott and Mr. Monroe ended things. Mr. Abbott let him go. Mm, I see. Who's in charge now? No one at the moment. Maybe I can put you in touch with Mr. Abbott at the ranch. Good. 9433, three, please. Smoke? No, thanks. Hello, Cully. This is Judy at the office. Is Mr. Abbott there? When do you expect him? Thanks. Out for the day, Mr. Dollar. <laughs> I'm not doing very well, am I? I wish I could be more helpful. Well, maybe you can. Uh, this man, Monroe, if you could tell me where I can get in touch with him, I'd appreciate it. Didn't you understand? He doesn't work for Mr. Abbott any longer. Yeah, I know, I know, but uh, he did notify us about the claim. Evidently, he's aware of the circumstances in the matter, and that's what I'm here to talk about. I see. Well? Mr. Monroe isn't in San Pietro any longer. He moved out of town on Tuesday. But where? He didn't leave a forwarding address, Mr. Dollar. <laughs> Where's the laundry going to send their bills? How about the finance company? He just left, and that's it. You want to know something? I don't get it. She dropped her eyes, mumbled something about having work to do, and uh, we left it at that. I put it in the back of my mind and asked someone else about this Mr. Monroe. Then I got busy solving one of my immediate problems. Expense account item two, $50. Deposit on a 1940 Terraplane station wagon I managed to rent from a man who ran a filling station. Ideal was $10 a day plus gas. Item three, $5.08, a tank full of gas. The Terraplane bucked a little, but it got me outside of town about four miles to the office of a tall, lanky man who never took his hat off. Dr. James Gorey, veterinarian. All the way from Hartford, Connecticut, huh? Yes, that's right. And having sunshine like this back there now, I'll bet you you're here about the Duke, huh? Duke Red, yes. The people who wrote the policy want me to look into the matter. Hope there's nothing wrong, is there? No, a matter of procedure, Doctor. Mr. Abbott's filed a claim for $65,000 indemnity, the loss of his racehorse. Mr. Monroe, who handled these matters for Mr. Abbott, is no longer around. Oh, yes, I understood they quarreled. Yeah, Mr. Abbott isn't around at the moment either, so I came to you. 
I don't believe I understand this. If Ben Abbott's bought that much insurance, he's sure got a right to file a claim for damages. Well, it's just good business to get the facts, Dr. Gorey, that's all. Quite a bit of money involved here. Yes. Fred was worth lots more than that, though. Oh? That horse would have won over $500,000, in my opinion. Full racing terminal. Yeah, well, it's too bad about all this. I understand from Mr. Monroe's correspondence that uh, you treated the animal, Doctor. Yeah, um, yes. Yeah. I take care of most of Ben's stock when they're here, when he's not on the road racing. Uh huh. I'd like to know exactly how the accident happened, Doctor. There was uh, something about a piece of machinery? A tractor with the blades up. Huh? Uh, Duke Red stumbled back into it hard, cut through his right hamstring all the way to the bone. I see. Do you make out a report in a case like this? In any case, Mr. Dollar. An animal is just like a human. This one more valuable than most, I guess. Any of them liable to get sick or hurt sometime. Here's the report. Thanks. They're pretty careful out there with all those animals. Naturally, they constitute a considerable investment on Ben Abbott's part. Yeah, sure. Oh. Most of the tendons cut, huh? Yes. Them as wasn't severed or ruptured. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. What? Well, there's a notation about the carcass. Cremated on the premises? Yes. Yeah. Well, let's see. The accident happened Sunday night. Cremated same night. Why so fast, Doctor? Ben Abbott wanted it that way. Can't blame him, I guess. Well, maybe not. But it'll make my job a little more complicated. Unless some x-rays were taken of the injury. There was no need for me to go into x-rays. Paralysis had already set in by the time I got there. Yeah, but that doesn't help me much, does it? Hmm? What do you mean? No carcass, no proof of the extent of injury to the animal. Lord, man, the animal was in a bad way. It was a mortal injury. How was he destroyed? Shotgun. Could he have lived? I mean, long enough for me to... You don't understand, Mr. Dollar. It would have been wrong not to destroy him with injuries like that. Mr. Abbott called you in right after the accident happened, did he? Yes. I got out there maybe 15 minutes later. Ben was alone with the horse. The minute I laid eyes on that animal, I knew he was finished, that he'd have to be destroyed. You advised Mr. Abbott that the horse had to be destroyed? I didn't have to. He knew it. He knows horse flesh as good as any vet alive. Well, did you consider calling in someone else? Why? Another doctor for consultation. I tell you, man, there was no use in going into anything like that. Did Mr. Abbott ask you to call in another vet? No, he did not. Who else was there? Nobody. No stable hand? No member of Mr. Abbott's family? No. Well, who saw the accident? Mr. Abbott. Who else? I don't know, Mr. Dollar. Like I said, just Ben was there when I got there. I haven't any proof that the animal was injured. You just read my report. I've got $65,000 to worry about, Dr. Gorey. I'll need more than just a report. Young man, I've been in business here over 30 years. I've done business with Ben Abbott over 20 years. You come here asking me if I called in another vet. If I did this, if I did that. There isn't a man around here who won't take my word. Why don't you? Part of my job, Dr. Gorey. Huh? I can't take anybody's word for anything. Mr. Dollar, I'd be obliged if you'd get out of here. I obliged, Dr. Gorey. I got out of there. Driving back to San Pietro on my terraplane, it struck me as odd that Gorey, certainly aware of the value of the injured horse, had not taken so much as a photograph to verify the story of the accident. For that reason, I decided to verify Dr. Gorey himself. Well, hello. Hi. How you doing? Oh, I don't know. Maybe you can help me. All right, try me. Well, this Dr. Gorey, is he new around here? <laughs> You're joking. No, I'm not. He's a fixture. He's been in this part of the country 30 or 40 years. They say he's the best vet this side of Lexington, Kentucky. <laughs> that takes in quite a bit of real estate. Is he loaded? I think he could retire and give advice over the phone. These horse racing people make new parents look like indifferent vegetables. They do? You don't know. A horse sneezes once and they're ready to call the Mayo brothers. <laughs> Dr. Gorey's practically the whole Mayo clinic in horsey circles. Say, how did you know about him? The insurance report. <laughs> of course. Well, I suppose you'd want to talk to him. Look, I'm driving out that way. I'd be glad to give you a lift. Oh, that's mine out there. 
<laughs> that? Yeah, rented it from a filling station man down the street. Oh. Well, you just drive right on past the filling station for about three miles and you'll see Dr. Gorey's place. Oh, thanks, but I've already been there. Huh? Yeah, just left him. Well, then why are you asking me about him? Heavens. Just asking. <laughs> You're a funny one. <laughs> hey, what's your name? Judy Brown. About finished here for the day? As a matter of fact, yes. Well, Judy Brown, let you and I go get something to eat and drink. How do you know I haven't got a husband? I don't. Have you? No. Well, how about it? Give me five minutes. Judy, I'm going to get right to the point. How long have you worked for Mr. Abbott? A year and a half. Why? You're from San Pietro? No, San Francisco. I answered an ad. I wanted to get out in the country for a while, away from the city life. Mm hmm. All right. What happened between Monroe and Abbott? They had a quarrel. A loud, loud quarrel. Mr. Abbott's very good with a quarrel. Oh, is he? Yes. You know, even I've wondered about that. What? Mr. Monroe quarreling with Mr. Abbott and then just leaving all of a sudden. Probably went to San Francisco. I don't know where else he... Oh. What's the matter, Judy? That looks like Mr. Monroe now. Monroe? Yes, end of the bar. I thought he was away. It's him, all right. Oh, I'd like to talk to him. Well, you'll have to hurry. Looks like he's getting ready to leave. Yeah. Excuse me. Sure. Hey. Hey, just a minute. You calling me? Yes. Mr. Monroe? Yes? Johnny Dollar, Universal Adjustment Bureau. I'm in town about the claim on Duke Red. But I heard you'd left town. I had. You talked to Mr. Abbott about that claim. Well, you had power of attorney for him and signed the claim. I wonder if I could talk to you. I'm leaving town again. Right away. Well, look, can't I just have a minute of your time? It wasn't my horse. It belonged to Ben Abbott. Talk to him. Now, get out of my way. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Let him handle his own dirty business. Look, Mr. Monroe. Get out of my way. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, there's proof that things are just about as wrong in this case... And as dangerous as they can get. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> 